Okay, we're going to talk about the background and history of the Internet and some tips on searching on the Internet. So to start with, we want a little background. What is the Internet? It's something we use all the time every day, but what what is it? Do you understand what it really is? It is a network of computers allowing the sharing of information or resources with many people in many places at the same time. Okay, yeah, great, sharing information, but what does that mean? So that's computers hooked up over different types of connections to share information, and so people can access it easily from lots of different places. How are those computers hooked up? Lots of different ways. Uh, originally, it was all telephone lines back when um, the early precursor to the Internet, um, which was through the Department of Defense, uh, they started hooking up defense researchers around the country uh, over telephone lines so that they could share information. And, and that's, if you remember at all, the old-fashioned and kind of the modem, and you'd put your phone onto the machine and it would squeal and you'd hear all this noise <laughs> back in those days. And then it evolved, of course, as these things do, and it got more sophisticated and things have changed. In the in the 80s, uh, the National Science Foundation got involved in funding and establishing a more widely spread internet or computer connections and so things like universities and research institutes and things like that got involved uh, got connected up and, and it sort of expanded from there um, at this point uh, it's now completely unattached to the government they don't fund it they don't run it there's no nothing like that and so um, it's just kind of self-supporting and self-sustaining so we've gone from that squealy telephone thing through cables and phone lines and uh, or not the telephone side side of the phone line, but the um, just the copper connections and satellites. There's all kinds of different ways to connect now. Um, it's changed a lot, and as I said, there was no plan. So that's kind of uh, one of the things that is interesting about this uh, about the internet as we've seen it is is there was no one fundamental plan behind it all. So it's just developed as things have developed. Um, it's, so it's kind of interesting. It's, it's really come out about organically. So you've got the internet, it's all these computer connections, but how do you how do you use it? Um, the most common way to use the internet is um, starting with a browser. So you have some sort of a browser to interpret the information that's on the internet. Uh, you know, you've got all those squeals, whether or not you can hear them, if they're coming over the cable or if they're coming over the phone line and you hear that ee and all the noise and all that, but the computers are talking to each other, but we don't speak computers, so we need to um, access things somehow. So a browser is going to interpret that. That's one of, the, one of the ways that you can do that. And um, a web browser started out quite a while ago uh, the first um, the first browsers that they were that they had available um, the very first one that was most commonly available was called Lynx and that was a text only browser uh, some of you might not even have ever heard of this before uh, there were no pictures all all you could do was it was just typed text it was black and white type text and that's all you got and then you would use that you had to have an exact address of where you wanted to go. You had to know the information. There was no searching at that point. There was no clicking on hyperlinks at that point. It was just text. It was just something you could read and then you could go to someplace in particular. Hyperlinks um, uh, came along and that really revolutionized things quite a bit at that point. And you could, um, it was still not it was still not point and click. It was still not point and click. <laughs> you had to um, tab over and it would highlight where there were links and then you would hit enter and it would take you to that link. That was a big, big revolution. And then some things came along. Some students, as these things go, like I said, no plan, just everybody sort of brainstorming and coming up with ideas. Um, the very first graphical browser was created, and that was called Mosaic. There was a group of staff and students at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign um, at the, na uh, the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. So a bunch of computer science people. 
and they were tinkering around, and they wrote the very first graphical browser. And when I say graphical browser, I mean there were pictures as well as words. And so you could start seeing some of that potential interaction and some more uses. It wasn't just all black and white text. And that was called Mosaic. And those um, those people took that, and Mark Andreessen was one of the main people there. And in 1983, he left the University of Illinois and founded the company Netscape. And if you haven't heard of Netscape, then you, <laughs> you definitely missed the early days of the Internet. Uh, Netscape was the first... Um, company, commercial company, uh, really, that was putting out a browser. And it was free, and it was really pretty exciting. Um, and that, w- that was the revolution, the gr- graphical browser rev- revolution. And a lot of that is what brought it to the people. Because when it was just links, and it was just um, the, the links browser, and it was just text, it was hard to use. I mean, you had to know what you were doing to use it. But with the, uh, with the coming of Netscape, Mosaic, and then Netscape, the common person, the non-computer science person, could kind of get involved and could start um, using it. And then it, it took a while before other companies got involved, but now browsers are a lot of them. Internet Explorer is huge. Firefox, Safari, Opera, Chrome, a whole bunch of things like that. These are a lot of different uh, web browsers. So this is an, in, a way to interact with the web with the internet um, in a way that people can actually do it. They can actually use it as opposed to um, having to be an expert uh, in the in the um, in the computer science field. So when you're going to go and interact with the internet, the most common way to do that is use the web and you're going to need a browser for that. So you're going to have one of these things. But that begs the question, are the internet and the World Wide Web the same thing? Are we talking about the exact same thing here? Well, the short answer is not actually. They're not actually the same thing. The web, the World Wide Web, is the most commonly used portion of the Internet. It is not the entirety of the Internet, however. As I mentioned earlier, the Internet is all those computer connections, all those cables and wires and computers talking to each other. That is the Internet. Uh, The web is the most commonly used portion. That's where you need a browser. You're going to interact with certain things that are connected over that. Other things. So the web is the most common portion, biggest portion we use. (laughs) Other things that you can do using the Internet, but not necessarily using the web, is you can can chat if you have a separate chat program. A lot of things can happen through your browser over the web, but not all of them. Uh, Telnet, uh, that's a program that you can use to log in remotely to a computer. FTP is a file transfer protocol, that's uh, transferring files from one computer to the other using uh, an FTP program. It's a separate application program. Instant messaging, if you're using uh, like an IM program, that you don't have to have your browser open, but it uses the internet. Um, Email. Uh, you can use email over the web. Lots of people do that now. MSN, uh, Yahoo, all those types of emails. But also, if you're running like uh, Outlook, if you have a separate program where you check your email on your computer, that's using the internet because it's it's using those con- computer connections, but it's not using the web. And so e- you can use your email separately. Um, news groups, those aren't as common anymore. Uh, and voice over IP, and that would be um, internet telephone. If you if you have uh, internet telephone at your house, like if you have um, Comcast, your tel- your local your home phone is o- through Comcast. That's using the internet, but it, through the cable through your computer through your Comcast cable. But you're using the internet, uh, but not the web. And so that's another thing you can do as well. So there, so there's a lot of stuff. The the uh, the web is the biggest part, but it is not the only part. And there's lots of ways to use the internet without using the web. So I want to be clear on that. So now we know what the internet is. We hope uh, connections of computers, lots of different things you can do using it. So what the internet is not. It is not organized. It's not necessarily organized. As I said, the government isn't running it. There's no one thing, one person or one company 
in charge, so it is not necessarily organized. Um, we've talked about how libraries are organized and that we follow rules and we follow systems and um, do we decimal and we use it but other libraries use it so no matter where you go you're, you've got the same system in place. That is not true using the internet. Uh, everybody, it's very freeform, <laughs> but uh, so people can organize things however they want. So there's no one person telling how, how everything and everyone's not following the same rules. So it's not really necessarily organized by any one pattern. It's not necessarily stable. Uh, this has certainly improved in the last few years. Um, back when it was really heavily relying just on those phone lines and modem connections, that was a lot trickier. You'd go and websites would be down and you wouldn't know why and it, there was a lot of up and down going on. But that can still happen. Um, when you're connecting from, if I'm sitting here in my office and I'm connecting to uh, a computer somewhere else, um, trying to access that information. If if that computer, once I travel on the information superhighway, my little request to use that, to access the information on that computer over the internet, once it gets out there and it finds that computer, if that computer is not working for some reason, it's not going to give me that information. It's not going to be able to interact with that computer. So if I was trying to access a website, that is housed somewhere else and it gets there and that computer is off. Oh, maybe there was a hurricane. <laughs> maybe something's going on. There's no power. There's no, you know, there something catastrophic has happened. Whatever's going on and that information, that computer that I'm trying to access is is off or whatever. I'm not going to be able to get that information. So there there are still some stability issues. So it's much much improved with the uh, different types of connections we have now, but but it can still be down if you're trying to access a website and it just says you know not found, you can't get to it, page cannot be displayed. That's gonna that's an indication that something's going on, probably on their end. So it's you know there's some stability issues, and as we've already seen, it is not always accurate as we saw in both. Um, when we talked about evaluating resources and we looked at the illiterate video earlier in the quarter, there's all kinds of information out there. Um, anyone can publish information on the internet. If you've got, get, get yourself to a computer and you can do it. Uh, and that's great. I mean, that there there's a wonderful upside to that, which is freedom of expression, freedom of information. People can do express themselves and share information about what they're interested in or their opinions or whatever um, much easier than they used to be able to. However, that means that things aren't always going to be accurate. Like I said, no one's in charge. No one's checking the quality of the information. There's no review board. There's no editor. Uh, you, as the person sitting at the computer accessing it, are the you're the editorial board. You're the review board. You are the the uh, the person who's evaluating that. You that's all on you. So you're the one who has to um, make sure that that information that you're finding is accurate. You, you're the one who needs to do that. That's why we talked about evaluating evaluating your resources. So so it's not necessarily organized. It's not necessarily stable, and it's not necessarily accurate. Well, that sounds like a whole bunch of negatives. <laughs> So, so why do we use it? If we're if it's got all those knots, why do we use it? Well, there's lots of good reasons, of course. It's current. It's a current source. It's always constantly changing and evolving. Uh, there's new stuff being added all the time. Um, unfortunately, on the flip side of that, there's not always the old stuff isn't always being taken away. So that's where again we go back to evaluating your resources. Is you have to check on that. Um, you want it to be current. If it's really old, then maybe it needed to be gone by now. <laughs> so, so, but it's current. It's it's always uh, being updated. So that's a really great reason to use it. It is great for source uh, source for obscure or specialized subject searches. Uh, when if you're doing something that's not very common, it's a really good place to go and find out what's going on in that area. Uh, People who are researching in specialized subjects often will publish their information or at least share their information on the internet, on the web, before it makes it into a magazine or a newspaper or a journal article, a book, anything like that. Somebody finds something new, that's the fastest way to get it out there. 
So it's really great for things that are pretty specialized. Um, you're going you're gonna to find stuff. And, and some fields, uh, some disciplines, some fields of study, there aren't a lot of journals to publish in. Uh, you know, with the whole peer review process and, you know, credibility of information, they have to wait for a while before they can do that. So uh, to get into the process. And so it's it's good to put some some of that information. They find something great, they want to put it out there, so they can put it out on the um, on the internet before they get it published. And so it's really so it's a good place to look for um, specialized subjects. Timely access to government information. Oh, this is one of my favorite um, things that has changed because of the internet. <laughs> uh, anything that our our government and has really leapt on board and. This was one of the things um, that came about uh, during the Clinton administration, really, I think, is when things just heightened a lot. And that's uh, government agencies having websites and putting their information online. It is just so much easier. Um, I wouldn't say completely gone, but very diminished are the times where you have to call during business hours to f talk to somebody to get some information. Um, go some to some office, some government office, and stand in line and wait to find out something or get a form that you need. So much of that is online now. It's just incredible. Um, you can uh, you can file your unemployment online. Uh, tax forms, I, we don't even keep them at the library anymore. Everything is online, not just the common stuff, but all the specialized stuff. You need a certain schedule. You need a, a special f form for the for your taxes. All that stuff is online now. Uh, it's it's really, you know, it's really changed a lot and really improved both the, our state government and the federal government. It's, it's uh, just gone up. So timely access to government information is a really great use. Convenient communication tools. How many people uh, email someone where they would never have? written sat down and written letters um, or people are all over Facebook now and communicating with people that way it's a, an easy way to keep in touch with people I always laugh when when people think um, that compute I mean in some ways maybe it is true computers are isolating us but I think it's creating different communities and we have to recognize that just because I'm sitting at a computer and I'm not talking to the person sitting next to me at the computer, that doesn't mean I'm being antisocial. That doesn't mean I have no interaction with people. Uh, it, I, maybe I'm on my computer and I'm, I'm chatting with someone or I'm doing something online where I'm interacting with people. It's just a different way of doing it. It's not necessarily wrong or bad, I don't think. Uh, it's just a different way and you know times change so we have to look at it but it's really convenient to communicate with people so that's a really great one what can we find on the web so we've talked about anyone can put stuff out there so what kind what kind of stuff is out there well most of the time everyone says everything yes pretty much anything you want to find what type of things reference information I love to use it for that, looking stuff up. Uh, technology, business, marketing. You want to find out if you're, if you're thinking about getting a job somewhere. Oh, job searching. Yeah, that's great. Um, but business information, you, maybe you want to work for a company. Okay, you should go to their website, check them out, see what they're all about. Business information. Literature, lots of free books online. People are self-publishing. Uh, you know, if you're an aspiring author, you can... Start a blog and put your work out there. It's it's just great. Um, art, all kinds of uh, same kind of things. People are getting their names out there, publishing their art online. Entertainment, we know all about that, right? You know, look up your movie. Um, oh, I'm going to go to a movie. What time is it playing? You know, or what's that movie about? I don't know. Let's go read some reviews. All that kind of stuff. Games, people are gaming online. I think. For me, that kind of goes back to that creating our own communities thing a little bit, too. Just because I'm not interacting with people in person doesn't mean I'm not part of a, a being social or part of a community. Uh, news. This is really a great way to get updated news. Uh, much faster even than uh, waiting for the radio news report 
or watching it on the news at night or waiting for the newspaper. Now things are updated constantly, like CNN's website, updated regularly. They don't just update it once a day with, here is today's news, you get to see it. No, it's being ch- anytime there's something new happening, they update it. So news information coming up very quickly. Science, lots of science stuff, both um, if you need help with science, <laughs> if you're studying science, you can get all kinds of help online, but also uh, people who are researching in science, sharing information that way, all kinds of great things. And current event, that kind of goes with the news, current stuff, things that are happening now, both um, from official news sources as well as uh, sort of man-on-the-street type things, uh, people blogging about things that they've witnessed or seen. That's been a big, a big thing in the last couple of years with um, lots of social protests and things like that, getting the current event right up there up front. So it's all out there, right? How do we locate that information on the web? I mean, it's all there, but, but how, do we actually, how do we actually get it? Well, once again, if we want to find information on the web, we start with a brow- web browser. Remember what those were? Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, some sort of a browser. So you're going to start there. You get your browser. Let's take a little side trip here, though. So you've got a browser. But what? there's lots of terminology. There's lots of terminology related to the web that you may or may not know what it means. There is a handout in the classroom about web terminology as well. But uh, some of the common things that you might hear about, HTTP, if you've ever looked at a web address, HTTP colon slash slash, blah, 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 blah. What is that? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That is telling your web browser what kind of computer language they're going to encounter. Now it's pretty common. You used to actually have to type in that HTTP colon slash slash every time you entered a, an address, but now you don't have to. They pretty much assume that's what you're going to use unless you type in something else. So um, so it's become pretty commonplace. But that's what kind of protocol is it going to need? What's it going to know about? URL, Uniform Resource Locator, uh, that is your web address. That's that www.cnn.com. That's the URL. Or ghc.edu. That's the URL. So if someone says, what's the URL for that? That's what they're talking about. What is the web address? ISP, Internet Service Provider. Who, who's, giving, who's, who's your internet from? Maybe you have TechLine. Maybe you have Comcast. You know, who's your internet service provider? Um, and then DNS, this is another com- common one, and that's the do- domain name system. And um, I was talking about how way back in the early days with the, the Lynx browser, um, you had to know where you were going. You had to have a URL. You had to have a, an address that actually you had to not just have a CNN.com type thing, but you actually had to have the specific computer number to the computer you wanted to talk to. And and that would be something like, what would that be? That would be like 139.34.29.407. That's a, an, uh, oop, something that's not on this picture. IP address, Internet Protocol address. That's the exact number of the computer that's connected to the Internet that you want to go access. You had to have that information before you could go anywhere. But um, the DNS, the domain name system, came along and it translated that very confusing number, long, confusing, hard to remember number, into a name. So actually when you type in the URL cnn.com, it runs out through the domain name system, through the DNS, and change it and, and then it says, okay, what is cnn.com? What computer does that go to? And then it locates that really long number and sends you to that computer. It's very quick. You don't really see it, but um, but it, that changes that. So Back in the old days, we had to have exactly which computer number you went to, but the domain name system, the DNS, um, translates that from something easy to remember, a word, to something that's very confusing to the number. So if you've ever been trying to go to a web page and you get an error message and it says DNS not found, that means whatever you put in was not found in that domain name system and they don't know where to send you. So there's no there's a disconnect there. So lots of different stuff here. While we're talking briefly about URLs, though, I mentioned CNN.com or GHC.edu. That dot something something 
is actually um, part of the system and then they have different meanings so dot com is commercial and dot edu is education and there's a whole bunch of them out there um, dot org is an organization so something like um, pbs would be a dot org every country has its own code so you might see dot nz for new zealand dot um, DE for Germany, dot JP for Japan. So every country has their own code, as well as um, there's dot com I mentioned, dot net, dot net. Uh, there's a whole a whole host of them. So there's lots of different things. Sometimes when you're looking at a URL, you can tell a little bit about the site by looking at that address. When you see that dot dot edu, you know it's coming from an educational institution. So there's a lot of things you can interpret by looking at a URL. All right, so we're, we want to find stuff. So we start with a web browser. Maybe we understand what kind of things we're looking for here. But then what you really need is a search tool. That's that. We've been talking about search tools, actually, so far this quarter. It's a means of finding documents that match your query. So you have a question, and it's going to help you you put that into some sort of a search statement and it's going to help you find that. So we've already looked at search tools. We looked at the library's catalog. That's a search tool for finding what books we own. Uh, we've looked at periodical databases, ProQuest, Research Library, Academic Search Premier. We've looked at some of those. Those are search tools. They're helping you, they're, they're, it's a tool to help you find magazine, newspaper, journal articles, periodicals. So when we're talking about searching on the internet, we need a search tool. It's the same thing. It's a means of finding things that match what you're asking for. Something to remember on, on web search tools. They compile information about websites, and then you search their database. Just like ProQuest Research Library collects information about certain magazines and journals and they put that into one spot and then when you go in and search you search through what they've put together. The same thing is true for web searching. Uh, if you go to a, a web search you are searching through their database, their information that they've compiled. When you go to a search tool and you type whatever you want in and you click search it is not at that very moment instantly going out and searching every website that exists. It would never be done searching if, if that were the case. So um, ev they're constantly collecting information. All these different search tools are collecting information about websites and then they're dumping it into one big centralized database. And that's what you're actually searching when you click that search button. So sometimes they find it faster. One search tool will find it faster than the other. That's why you don't get all the same results. So what kind of search tools? Search engines, most common thing we're used to using. Search engines. Google, Bing, um, all that. They're, those are search engines. You type in a word, a word or a phrase, a couple words, hit search, off you go. There's also directories, uh, IPL2, um, about.com. These are more directory-like. A directory is more like a hierarchy. So... Um, uh, search engines are more like keyword searching and directories are more like subject searching. Um, directories tend to have a human intervention. <laughs> a keyword, keywords are just computerized. The computer recognizes a word and it matches it. Directories tend to have human intervention. I'm not implying that you can't search in a directory, but they tend to be categorized by people. Somebody actually looks at a website, tells, you know, gives it a gives it a category, tells you what it's about. So directories are more like subject heading searching and search engines are more like keyword searching. Um, there's meta search engines, which are search engines that search other search engines. <laughs> so if you go to something like Clusty and you do a search, it runs out and searches, they'll tell you how many, like seven other searches. They do seven other search tools, and then they bring you back results into one place. So they search other search engines. And then there are things that are generally more uh, called portals, which are 
like search engines, and they have search engines involved usually. Yahoo, MSN are really good examples, but they're more of a um, a tool that does a little bit of everything. They do search, but they also um, they that's where you get your news and your email and your shopping and what's the weather and it's it's one portal to all the information that you could want on the web. So I'm not implying that Yahoo doesn't have a search engine with it, but it, it's more as a type of site. It's more of a portal than just strictly a search engine. Um, and you go there and you get your email and you do all these things. Yahoo actually originally started. It was it was a directory. It was a really actually well put together um, subject directory. And if you poke around in there, you still can find that that element of it. But it's harder to find because it's quite a busy site now. Um, but you you can see if you look at these different sites, you can see the differences visually, and it makes it a little bit of a difference too. But that's that's more of a portal site where they're they're trying to do a little bit of everything. So you need a search tool of some sort whatever category of these you like to use. But then you need a strategy. Just like we wanted to have strategy when we were searching for books and magazines, we want to have some strategy when it comes to searching the web. Because if you think searching for a magazine article and getting oh, 10,000 magazine articles is too much, if you, well, I'm sure you've all searched the web. If you've ever searched the web, 10,000 is nothing. You, you, you know, 10 million. <laughs> so you want to have you want to have some strategy. It's important to to have that. Some things to think about. Don't forget that there's an advanced search. Sometimes it's hard to find, and you have to go poking around looking for it. But just like we saw in our uh, periodical searches, where there's a search form and it helps you with your Boolean operators, and you can kind of fill out the form to do what you want. There is an advanced search in most search tools. I've not found one that didn't have an advanced. And so it can help you out with things like, do you want this as a phrase? Do you want these words um, separate? Do you want either or? Do you want and? They, they'll give you a lot of that help stuff in the advanced search. So don't forget to look for an advanced search. Um, branch out. Try more than one search tool. I was just saying they compile information about the web and then you search their database. Not all the databases have the same stuff. They don't all find things at the same rate and in the same way. So try more than one place. It's nice to have a favorite that you're used to using, but be sure and, and branch out. Get help. Whether you ask a librarian for help or just reading the help on the, um, the search, in, search tool. Never hesitate to ask for help. It always makes me kind of sad <laughs> when someone comes up and says, oh, I've been sitting at the computer for two hours browsing through websites, or even an hour. And, you know, I got 10 million results, and I'm just paging through them all, and I'm paging through them all, and I'm not finding what I want. Oh, please don't spend that much time. <laughs> if, if you don't find something fairly early in your search, especially when we're talking about web searching, if the first page or two or three doesn't have anything that looks like it's really what you wanted, there you need to make a change. Don't uh, get some help. Find out what's going on. Make some changes. A good search strategy is to, especially on the um, web, is to use unique terms. Try and find in your your search topic uh, an unusual Pick pick out your most unusual terminology or a really specific way of expressing your idea uh, so you can focus down on that. Um, if you have a, a name of an organization or a person's name that is pertinent to your topic and is important, might be good to use that. That's going to help focus you down. But use any type of unique term, something that's really specific. And learn as you go. It's really great to figure out what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Don't hesitate to change your search words, change your strategy, do things a little bit differently. Like I said, branch out, try a different search engine, whatever whatever you're going for there. Um, kind of adapt as you can, as you go. Don't stick with a strategy or query that doesn't seem to be working. If you're always putting in the same three words and you don't seem to be getting results that that you like, <laughs> that match, then don't don't keep using those. Change your words. Make some sort of an adjustment. 
helpful to put phrases in quotation marks. If you want it to say attention deficit disorder in as a phrase, put that phrase in quotation marks. Like I said, you could go to the advanced search and sometimes you can just tell it you I want these words as a phrase, but quotation marks is always a good idea when you're web searching. So if you want the words to be separated out, fine, don't worry about it. But if you want them to be a phrase, if it really needs to say that phrase, then quotation marks is the way to go. Boolean operators. Don't forget that we can use Boolean operators. <laughs> so something like dog and cat not bird could equal out to be plus sign dog, plus sign cat, and minus sign bird. Check the help on whatever search tool you're using on what their Boolean operators are. Some of them will actually take and or not. They'll, you can just type those in. Sometimes they want them to be in all caps. Sometimes you need to go to the advanced search and use the form to get your Boolean operators. Or again, they might use the plus and minus system. The help on any particular, um, on any particular search tool that you're going to use, the help should tell you what are their Boolean operator conventions. It's good to remember what we're trying to do here is get good results. You want to use all these strategies to get good, relevant results. Some databases or you know, some search engines say they have more. They're bigger database, there's more information there. They've got, you know, millions and billions of websites in their database. Well, that's great, but the important thing is do you get accurate results? When you put in what you want using some sort of coherent strategy, do you get the results that match? I mean, it doesn't matter if you get a million results if they're all garbage. Who cares? You know, that's that's actually a waste of your time. So like I said, if you if you don't see something that looks like it's appropriate to your topic in the first 20 or 30 sites, you know, the first couple of pages, uh, stop. Don't just keep looking. Obviously, you need to change your search or change a search tool or check the help or, or something. You know, don't don't keep paging through those. You want to get um, you want to get accurate results as quickly as possible. We want to be efficient. Good luck, and you're ready to go.